everybody. Thanks for coming out tonight. Please welcome to the stage Jim's opening act, one of the writers on The Jim Jeffries Show, Mr. J.J. Whitehead. Wow, all right. You've, you've seen me before? Oh, that's good. I, I exist, so... Holy shit, there's 3,000 people here and I've got two nutcases up front. <laughs> ah! ha, hello, the 2,998 people who don't know who the fuck I am. <laughs> How are you doing? Are you ladies all right? You just off your meds tonight, is that? It's like, fuck it, it's Saturday night. Leave the drugs at home. Excellent, good to have you here at the gig. Sorry, not have you. It's Weinstein era. I didn't mean to get carried away. I just, it's nice. Welcome. Whew, that was a close one, wasn't it? I just, whew. So I am, I'm, I'm JJ. I'm from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, yeah. It's nice to be somewhere where that gets a cheer, because... I've been touring with Jim for, I don't know, whatever, eight years or whatever, and uh, we, as we tour through America, I say Halifax, Nova Scotia, and they look at me like I think I'm Harry Potter or some shit. I, he's clearly making that up. It's not a, not a real place. And now I'm up here in my native country doing a show, and you guys are like, I don't know, it might have been a pity clap, but here, so like, oh, it's real, it's real. Explain to your American friends, it means nobody's looking after the lighthouse right now. Jay's... <laughs> Jay is here now. And I haven't been to Toronto for a long time. Uh, I've been living down in, a, in, a, in, in, in Hollyweird, and uh, so it was nice to be back, but it was, everybody's been looking at me like I have learning disabilities. <laughs> Because I was like the train from the airport. I was like, this is amazing. We don't have to get on a bus anymore. And I'm trying to talk to people like, you know, there used to be a bus. And then I arrive at Union Station and I went up to the dude and I was like, I gotta, where, what happened to Har where's the Harveys, man? I wanna get Harveys. Because <laughs> I don't care what you say, I fucking love Harveys. <laughs> And it only exists in like eight cubicles, I guess, in Canada now, because nobody else likes it. So if I still lived here, I'd be keeping that place alive. But I'm walking around Union Station going, where's the Harvey's gone? And they're all looking at me like, what, did this, this guy just thaw out or something? What <laughs> the hell he's, he's come from? They're treating me like I'm a ghost or something. There hasn't been a Harvey's here for six years. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is going on, man? I can't find a Sweet Marie bar or a Harvey's. The Leafs are good. This is not the Toronto that I remember. Things changing, man. I don't like change. I like my little American life that I'm slowly trying to build. I miss Canada. I miss all the good stuff about us. But, uh, you know, I'm working on it. I got a new American girlfriend. Uh, so that's, well, I say new. She's used. But she's new to me. So, she's on the up and up. You know? And, uh, but people are getting weird. People are turning into morons. And uh, I just, I'm trying to help a friend through a divorce right now. And uh, that's not going well. Uh, Men, men are morons, aren't they? We're all starting to realize this. this. Yeah, yeah, woo, we're idiots. This. We got no, we don't know what, we got no plan. <laughs> Trying to help a friend through a divorce. And, uh, and his wife, I know her, his ex-wife, I know, like, her and her friends, oh, they had a plan. They were ready, they were motivated, <laughs> dancing around handbags at the bar, helping her through shit, you know. They know how it's done. And I just saw the process. And I was like, why can't we do that for Gary? And we're just incapable. Because I immediately my friends were on the phone like, Janet, Cindy, Marcy's been dumped. We got work to do. Let's go. <laughs> Grab your traveling pants, you know? <laughs> you know what to do. You rock up to Marcy's house. They're like, you know, I think you crack the first drink. You say supportive things. Like, he was a jerk anyway. You deserve better. You know, plenty of fish, and then ten drinks later, you're plotting how to kill him, and that's beautiful, and that's 
female empowerment. <laughs> Doesn't happen for the dudes, man. Nine of us gathered around my friend Gary. He's like crying, and we didn't know, we don't have, the cumulative male mind isn't any smarter than the dumbest brain in the bunch. <laughs> That's the problem, you know? We all learned this last November at the American election, right? Men, <laughs> together, morons. <laughs> Couldn't figure out what to do. One of my buddies went, well, let's take him to a strip club. And like a crew of idiots, we all looked at each other and went, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what needs to happen right now. Strip makes sense, strip club. And I know, because there's men in this room right now thinking, yeah, that is what you do, dude. That's. <laughs> Totally what you do, you take them to a strip club. There's men in this room right now who think a strip club is a solution for most things. Like, ah, oh, dude, you broke your arm. Let's get you to the strip club. Shouldn't we go to the hospital first? No, these women are professionals. They'll know what to do, let's get you to the strip club. Look, that one's a nurse, you're gonna be okay. Taking a newly single man to a strip club, that's pretty, that's like if his car got stolen and a bunch of dudes just rocked up and went, aw oh, man, forget about your car, we'll take you to a showroom. <laughs> and sh show you a bunch of other vehicles that, that you can't afford. <laughs> and you're not allowed to get in. <laughs> so. Our drinking session starts the same, though. That's what I did to us. When we finally started drinking and trying to support our buddy, it starts the same as the ladies. Starts. We all crack the first drink, and we say the supportive things, like, she didn't deserve you anyway, man. Screw her. Plenty of fish. It'll be okay. <laughs> but 10 drinks later, men tend to forget what kind of angle they were coming at the topic from. <laughs> And they start saying things like, she had awesome tits, man. <laughs> she had a rockin' butt. Remember how she looked in that skirt? We're never gonna see her in that skirt again, Gary. <laughs> That's all your fault, man. Can I get her number from you? That'd be all right. <laughs> There's some very good laughers in here tonight. It's, it's a, this is a unique night, because usually there's maybe one weird laugher at a push. But from what I've calculated, there's like six of us. And you're all laughing weird at different times. <laughs> this will be an interesting one. Um, if you do like my comedy, uh, there's an album that they're selling at the back. Uh, so please do look me up uh, as a Canadian comic. I can always use your support. <laughs> Yeah, my name is uh, on uh, social interwebbing. It's JJ White Snake because uh, I was drunk when I signed up. <laughs> so don't be shy. That is me. Now that being said, I need to tell you this story. Uh, there was an awkward masturbation incident in my hotel room recently, and uh, <laughs> there's no way to get into this story. I just throw the subject out there. And, yeah, no, Louis C.K. was not in the room. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> who'd have seen that coming? <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, I was in the room alone. I was alone in my room watching a hockey game. That's not how it all happens. This is just, I'm watching a hockey game and the menu came up on the monitor and just hotel menu and it just started scrolling down through like map of area, pay-per-view, adult pay-per-view. I didn't, I wasn't, I wanted to watch the hockey game. So I grabbed the remote, I went back up to the hockey game, TV went back down to the dirty movie. It felt like my TV was trying to suggest things. <laughs> like my TV was just going, dude, it's four in the afternoon. <laughs> you don't have to work for five hours. How about a little you time? <laughs> Did not want any me time, wanted to watch the hockey game. So I went back to the hockey game, TV went back down to the porn. I couldn't understand what was happening until one more time I returned to the hockey game and that's when I heard another man screaming in the next hotel room. <laughs> Through the wall, I just heard some dude go, Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> So that's when I realized that his remote 
control and my remote control. <laughs> Same frequency. We're changing each other's televisions through the wall. <laughs> so as I am trying to watch a hockey game, clearly in the next room I got some naked, lubed up, sexually depraved monkey boy <laughs> desperately trying to deal with his demons. <laughs> And he feels like his television is talking back to him. <laughs> he feels like his TV is going, dude, you've been here for three days. I've seen you get freaky 17 times. Why don't you take a break from yourself? Watch this hockey game. <laughs> now that I knew what was going on, I couldn't help but screw with him through the wall as well. I let him go down into his dirty movie, and just as it looked like it was going to get interesting, bam, back to the hockey game. <laughs> In the end, I figured I had to let him have his way, so I was not going to be victorious in this tug of war, shall we call it. <laughs> it's my favorite bit, too. Select. Off he went into the menu, and I was I was disappointed. He selected a film called Harry Milfs <laughs> on the Run. Always the correct response. <laughs> that laughter is not, <laughs> ma'am or sir, whatever you are in the shadows there. That laughter of acknowledgement is not what I expected. But <laughs> like, which one was it? Which I, this... <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I was disgusted with him. <laughs> Disgust and 10 minutes later, I was disgusted with myself. <laughs> I did what I could to gather my pride and decide now it's time for me to go for a walk. So upon exiting my room, I couldn't help but shout at his door. I was like, dude, you got terrible taste in adult cinema. <laughs> and he answered the door, and that's how I met Jim Jeffries. So, uh, <laughs> Keep your phones away, you know how it's all done. You're a very hot crowd. You're hotter than both of our shows last night. So this is gonna be a killer show. Best comic work in the world today. He's gonna be in two minutes. Just two minutes, hang on for him and have a great show. All right, have a good one, John.